Roots are kind of an abbreviation of the phrase square root or cubic root or a variety of other roots. And roots are used to calculate things like the length of a side of a square or the length, width, or height of a cube, given the volume or area of that cube or square. Let's go ahead and take a look at what this means in practice. I have two examples. Um, the first one is the square root of nine. Now it's already worked out, but the concept is the square root, that's that radical symbol right there, the thing I just traced in blue. It's called a radical or a square root. Um, the square root of nine is asking what number times itself, these have to be the same, what number times itself equals nine. And since we know that three times three equals nine, we can write three squared in place of the number nine. And then the key component here, I'm gonna to switch to pink because pink is fun. The square root symbol and the square symbol, they are kind of inverse operations of one another, which suggests that they'll cancel each other out. And the only thing that remains behind is the three. So the square root of nine equals three. Now, math purists out there might say that that is something called the principal square root, and they're correct. Um, technically speaking, the square root of nine has two solutions, positive three and negative three, because positive three times positive three equals nine, and negative three times negative three equals nine as well. So technically speaking, there are two answers for the square root of nine. There is positive three and negative three, and oftentimes we'll write that as positive or negative three. But in most cases, if a problem is expecting to see a negative sign, what you'll see inside the problem is a negative in front of the radical symbol. If that's the case, you would say the answer is negative three. If you see no such negative sign, you'll expect to see no such negative sign in the answer. Um, especially when these problems um, pertain to a square or some actual shape or object that you might be working on. When we're just doing math for the sake of doing math, which we definitely do as well, sometimes you will get the plus or minus. Now, same thing happens for cubic. Um, the cubic root, you'll see that up here, you see a number three on the little diving board. That number three is called the index. And the formerly known as the square root symbol is no longer a square root symbol. We'd go back to calling it a radical symbol. And because of the index being a three, we're gonna call this a cubic root. Instead of a square root, we're gonna call it a cubic root. So we'd be asking what's the cubic root of eight, which is to say what number times itself times itself equals eight. And we once again can go ahead and, I'll use pink just like I did before, we can say the cubic root of eight is two to the third power. And because I have the index and the exponent the same, They'll cancel each other out and we'll simply get a two. Now this one doesn't get the positive or negative. Um, if we were to have a negative on the front, we would have a negative on our answer. Interestingly with cubes, if we had a negative on the inside, we would still have a negative two because negative two times negative two times negative two would still equal negative eight. So that would work either way. With that in mind, perfect squares and cubes are the numbers that you get when you take your integers from one through 12 or one through any number of values, right? In Pennsylvania, in eighth grade, we memorize one through 12 for perfect squares and for perfect cubes. Uh, in Pennsylvania, you're only required to memorize one through five, um, but I normally have my students go one through 10. Your teacher might do the same. If you forget what these numbers are, I have a list of them right here. Um, and I have a list of the perfect cubes as well. Now there's a lot of memorization that's expected within this topic. Your teachers will expect you to memorize as well. But the nice thing is they'll tell you, just like I'll tell you, if you forget your perfect squares or your perfect cubes, you simply multiply the base, which in this case is one times one or two times two or three times three and four times four and so on. And you already know these numbers. So you in essence already know the first 12 perfect squares. Same deal with perfect cubes. The first one is one times one times one, or two times two times two, or three times three times three, and so on. So you can multiply those numbers out and calculate all of the perfect cubes. So you don't really have to memorize them. It sure does make it easier if you do, because you'll identify them easier, but you don't actually have to memorize them because you can just recalculate.
On the other side, if you see a square root, um, notice I have a note here, principal square roots. If you don't see any positive or negative in front, or you don't see any negative in front, you just see the square root. For example, the square root of one like I have here. All I want is the principal square root, which is the positive version. So what number times itself equals one? What number times itself equals four? What number times itself equals nine? And if I jump to the other column, what number times itself equals 81 and 100 and so on? So you get the idea on how you could do square roots and cubic roots are the same idea. What number times itself times itself? In other words, what three numbers that have to be the same multiply together to give you one? What three numbers multiply together that have to be the same to give you eight? And so on, and so on, and so on. Literally, just memorize your list of perfect squares and cubes or have a good reference for yourself and you'll be able to be successful with any perfect squares and cubes.